Hello and welcome to the sixth section of this course, Other Ansible Resources and Areas. In this section, we're going to take a look at Troubleshooting Ansible, how we can troubleshoot the underlying SSH connectivity, and also how we can troubleshoot the execution of Ansible. We're going to look at how we can validate a particular Ansible version through the use of the testing framework that is part of the Ansible source code. We'll be discussing the best practices and finally we'll look into how we can upgrade Ansible. Hello and welcome to the first video of this section, Troubleshooting Ansible. In this video we're going to take a look at Troubleshooting Ansible. We'll be looking at how we can use the SSH daemon in debug mode to troubleshoot connectivity using the Ansible syntax checking option, stepping through an Ansible playbook, starting an Ansible playbook at a specific task, using logpath for login, and finally increasing the Ansible verbosity. Throughout the course, we've made extensive use of the debug module. Personally, this is one of my favorite means of troubleshooting Ansible when running playbooks. However, you may have problems prior to actually using Ansible in earnest, mainly with one of the main requirements of Ansible, a working SSH implementation. This process falls outside of Ansible, but nevertheless, it is a useful approach for troubleshooting. What we're gonna do here is look at how we can troubleshoot the SSH daemon. If we take a look, I can here actively connect from my control host Ubuntu-C to my Ubuntu host Ubuntu-1. And that's working as expected. If however something was wrong, for example, let's say that I set the permissions on my authorized keys file on the remote incorrectly to 777. So I have the remote here. Okay, so we've changed the permissions there, and now if we go back here and we try and connect again, just clear that and try and connect, what we get there is the password prompt. So in this case, we know what the problem is, but how would we go about troubleshooting this if we didn't know what the problem was? So the first thing we can actually try here is doing a SSH-V from the client side to Ubuntu 1. And what we get there is a lot of information from what it's actually tried on the client side. We can see there it's found a key here, it's trying them, but we haven't actually got anything which is really that helpful here for us to troubleshoot this issue. We can see it tried a few different things, but in the end, it's reverted to the password. Okay, so let's have a look now at the options from the remote side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna control C and clear that. And if we go to the remote side, and we'll start fresh here, what we're going to do is run the SSH daemon ourselves, and we're gonna run it on a specific port. So. We do user sbin sshd and we're going to run this in debug mode and we're going to run it on port 1234. Okay, so we can see there that the server is listening on port 1234 and just make some space there so we can see new information as it comes in. And now from here, from our control host, Let's actually do the connection again. But this time, when we actually connect, we are going to connect and specify the port. Okay, so it's come up with the password prompt there. And if we go back and have a look on the server, we've got a lot of information here. And if we look through, we can actually see the exact problem that we're having there authentication refused, bad ownership, or modes for file. 
So we can see the actual error this time, what it's relating to. And as I said, we know what this is because we did this intentionally. But when you're having SSH problems, a lot of the time where I have a problem and it's unknown, I follow this same approach of either trying with the client with verbosity enabled or setting the server in debug mode and checking the logs. And more often than not, I'm able to pinpoint the specific SSH issue which is causing me problems. And we'll just put that SSH key back to how it should be. Okay, great. Okay, that's working as we expect now. Let's look at some troubleshooting from the Ansible side. So if we have a look, for example, we'll go into our directory here of revisions and we'll go into section three and it was blocks is in video eight and we'll go into revision three here. And what we have is the blocks playbook that we were looking at earlier. So something we can actually do here quite quickly is we can use the Ansible playbook command against the playbook with the dash dash syntax check. And there we can validate that the syntax is okay. So we did this earlier, we know that this one is fine, but that's a nice and convenient way of checking something quickly. Another option we can do here is through the use of the step parameter. So again, if we use the Ansible dash playbook and we'll run this against the blocks playbook with dash dash step. When we do this, we are given the options here of whether we want to, in this case, gather the facts. No. And if you notice there, it's a capital N. Yes, with a lowercase y and c to continue with a lowercase c. If we do yes, this is going to execute that specific task. If we choose n, it's going to skip that task. And if we do c, it's going to continue with the rest of the playbook. So we'll just do that here. And we know that this blocks playbook fails that was intentional with this one so we don't have to be alarmed there and there we have it so that's run so that step option is pretty handy for troubleshooting or if you've got something in the background where you need to check for example the logs are an external process that is running If we've named our tasks as we've done here, we can have the playbook skip direct to a certain task. So for example, if we look at the blocks playbook, we can run this, the name of the playbook, and we can do dash dash start at task equals, and then we quote, and we put the full name of the task in. And there it's gone direct to that task. By default, Ansible will not log executions, but this can easily be configured in the ansible.config through the use of logpath. So if we look at our ansible.config, we don't actually have that in here. Let's make a change and let's put the log path equal to temp log.text and let's run the playbook again so if we have a look at that file you can actually see here we have the information logged we have a timestamp we can see the process id was actually running at the time and the user that was executing as well so that's very handy.
Finally, the last thing I want to cover here is the use of the verbose option to Ansible. When using verbose, the verbosity level can be increased in a variety of ways, ranging from a verbosity level of 1 to 4. So, for a verbosity level of 1, the output data is displayed. If we increase that to 2Bs, the output and input data is displayed. Increasing it to 3 will give us additional information provided for connections to managed hosts. And increasing it to 4 gives us extra verbosity that includes the connection plugins and scripts as well as user context. Let's have a quick look at that being used. We'll run our playbook again. And we'll go straight in with the four Vs. So now we can see a lot of information on what is actually going on in the background. So if you are having problems troubleshooting and you've tried other methods using the verbose options, very useful here. Okay, great. We still had the log path set in the ansible.config. So now if we actually look through at that log file after running in verbose mode, we can see there. So 2014 in my case was where I was running the initial task and scroll on through and 2017 is where we picked up the verbose task. So you can actually see a lot of information there. We've got the information from Ansible dash dash version. You can see the locations of the various modules there is using. And looking through, you've got a lot more context. Very, very useful.